Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about normal anatomical structures present in maxilla on different radiograph. In our previous lecture we have studied about the normal anatomical structures that is present uh, in mandible on different radiograph but today we will discuss about uh, the you know structures that is present, normal anatomical structures present in maxilla on different radiographs. So first of all uh, we have here we shadow it is you know present bilaterally and a relatively radiolucent structure seen on a panoramic lateral oblique and cephalometric radiographs result from lack of soft tissue between the posterior lateral surface of the tongue and region of soft palate and posterior pharynx here you can see there are some shadows you know you can uh, find shadows of tongue as well here right but here we have the shadows of the airway okay remember it is due to you know lack of soft tissue between the posterior lateral surface of the tongue and region of the soft palate and posterior pharynx okay then we have intermaxillary suture intermaxillary or median suture between right and left maxillary bones can be identified as thin vertical radiolucency in a midline between central incisors here you can see a radiolucent area between central incisors Usually delineated by two thin vertical radio opaque lines, cortical bone, okay, uh, radio opaque lines as you can see here, right, okay, generally fuses uh, later in life and then no longer seen on radiograph. So, you know, after a few year, years, they will fuse with each other and after that you will not be able to find this intermaxillary suture on radiograph. So, this is intermaxillary suture. Then we have incisive foramen. Incisive foramen, anterior palatine foramen, frequently shows has a round oval diamond shaped or heart shaped radiolucency that is well defined on occlusal and periapical radiographs. Here you can see it. Okay, it may be heart shape, it may be oval shape, right, or maybe spherical. Okay, the position of foramen on a radiograph ranges from between the roots of the central incisors close to the alveolar ridge to the level of epices. Variability in position of foramen on radiograph is due to angulation of the rays and position of the foramen. So this is the you know incisive foramen here. Okay, this is the radiolucent area. Remember the black area is known as the radiolucent, whereas the you know white area on the radiograph is known as the radio opaque. So uh, this is the radiolucent area on periapical radiograph. This is periapical radiograph. Okay. All right. Then we have superior foramina of incisive canals. On radiograph, they are seen as two round or oval radiolucent areas above the epices of central incisors in the floor of nasal cavity near its anterior border and both sides of nasal septum. Here you can see these two structures over here at the epices of the central incisors, right? These are superior foramen of incisive canal. In intraoral periapical uh, you know image, their image be superimposed over epices of incisor which may be misinterpreted as periapical pathosis. Remember these are uh, you know structures, these are normal anatomical structures, these are not pathosis, okay? So you should memorize this. This these are superior foramen of incisive canals. Okay, then we have nasolacrimal duct. Okay, nasolacrimal duct. We drain the tear inside the nasal cavity through the nasolacrimal duct and it opens at the inferior, you know, meatus or below the inferior concha. Okay, nasal and maxillary bones uh, form the nasolacrimal canal. Okay, nasal and maxillary bones form the nasolacrimal canal seen on a maxillary occlusal radiograph. Projected onto the posterior heart palate near the first or second motor, as well as uh, as well defined radiolucency bilaterally, uh, well defined by sharp radio opaque borders. Here you can see here, right? Here you can see here. This is nasolacrimal duct. On periapical radiograph, it may be seen in the region above the apex of canine, especially if steep angulation is used, right? So uh, it was about the nasolacrimal duct, right? Just above, uh, above the, or you can say on the palatal aspect. Uh, this is the occlusal radiograph showing the maxilla, 
this is the palette and these are the maxillary teeth of course and this is the palatal side so uh, on the you know palatal aspect of the first molar here we can see on the, side, the palatal aspect of the second molar okay okay now we uh, I have a question right what is this structure just pause the this video uh, here right and answer the question so I will answer after three seconds one two and three yes if you uh, have you know uh, you have told the answer to be maxillary sinus then you are a good doctor this is maxillary sinus okay Maxillary sinus appear has a well-defined radio sensitivity with thin, sharp, radio-opaque borders. Right? There will be radio-opaque borders. It shows considerable variation in size. They enlarge in childhood, achieving mature size by the age of 15 to 18 years. Floors of the maxillary sinus and nasal cavity are seen at approximately same level at age of puberty in radiograph. In adult sinuses are usually seen to extend from the distal aspect of the canine to the posterior wall of the maxilla above tuberosity. In older individuals it may extend further into the alveolar process and may extend up to the alveolar ridge in the absence of teeth. So here we have the you know maxillary sinus over here. This is a radio opaque line here which is marked red here okay. Uh, if you talk about older patients and if there is no tooth in the area uh, the sinus will extend up to the you know uh, the crest of the ridge and it is known as pneumatization okay here you can see up to the crest of uh, uh, the ridge it means it is very close to the crest of the ridge right and this is known as pneumatization so uh, that's it about the normal anatomical structure as far as the maxilla is concerned and we will come up with more videos about the radial senses, unilocular or multilocular about their, you know, differential diagnosis, the treatment of those, you know, pathologies. We will discuss about uh, those lectures and those, you know, topics, right? So this is the references of this lecture, okay? And that's it about this lecture. Hopefully you enjoyed this lecture. So if you enjoyed my lecture, please subscribe to my channel and. I will come up with more videos on oral pathology and other medical stuff. So till my next video, take care and bye bye.